This story sounds simple on the surface, but it really isn't. Exxon Nobel is claiming it's developed a new graphite material that can extend EV battery life by up to 30%. That's literally what they've said. And that headline alone sounds like yet another you know, battery breakthrough. And normally I'd be pretty skeptical of that. And so I always spend a lot of time, many, many hours, sometimes days, really digging into stuff and emailing people and trying to figure the, the nitty gritty stuff out. But once you actually dig into what they are talking about, this turns out to be, uh, you know, less about a brand new battery and much more about something most people completely ignore the anode, actually. And that's where this actually gets interesting, because almost every lithium-ion EV battery on the road today, whether it's LFP or NMC, NCA, still relies on graphite on the anode side. Roughly 95 or to 99% uh, of the EV anodes today are still graphite-based. So when someone says they've materially improved graphite performance, they're not talking about a niche chemistry, they're talking about the core of the battery itself. In a, you know, that's a sort of simple, simple way of putting it. Exxon says that its new synthetic graphite structure can extend battery life by around 30%. That's their number as well, 30%. It's coming from statements made by the CEO, a chap called Darren Woods, and they've also said that multiple EV manufacturers are already testing the material and uh, it's passing all the tests, basically. So importantly, they're not saying this is a new battery pack or a new cell chemistry. It's an upgraded carbon structure used on the anode side of a conventional lithium iron cell. So much less you know, complex, I suppose, than a new type of battery entirely. So what does 30% actually mean in the real world? So let's put some rough numbers around it and break it down a little bit and just try and figure out what is exactly going on. A typical modern EV battery, often engineered for somewhere between one and a half thousand to 2,000 full cycles uh, before it degrades to 70 or 80% in the, of the original capacity. If you take the lower end of that, so let's say 1,500 cycles, and you genuinely improve the cycle life by 30%, then you're suddenly looking at 1,950 cycles. So that's a pretty big deal, really. And uh, 400 kilometers at 400 kilometers of real world range per cycle, that's the difference between 600,000 cycles uh, kilometers and 780,000 kilometers before hitting the same degradation threshold. So that is not a very small change. That's a very big deal, and that's the difference between a battery being end of life in private ownership in you know 18 years time versus still being very very usable in fleet taxi or second life storage applications. So to be clear, Exxon hasn't released independent test data publicly. We don't have cycle curves or charge rates or anything like that, temperature profiles, um, degradation graphs. So you really should treat the 30% as a kind of upper climb, really. Uh, not a guaranteed number, but from a battery science perspective, it's not an impossible claim either, actually. There were reports on this a few years ago, someone suggesting that that sort of thing would be possible and that was actually their guess a 30% increase if they did this sort of stuff. So the anode is one of the main bottlenecks for battery aging. A lot of uh, long-term degradation comes with things like SEI, uh, layer growth or lithium plating during the fast charging and uh, during fast charging micro cracking of the graphite structure and increased internal resistance over time. If you can engineer graphite with a more stable surface, better particle uniformity, and also I would I would imagine fewer impurity sites as well, then you could absolutely slow down those degradation mechanisms uh, theoretically. That's my understanding. So this is especially relevant for fast charging as well. One of the reasons battery uh, batteries degrade faster when you DC fast charge is frequ frequently isn't the cathode, it's the anode struggling to absorb lithium ions quickly enough without plating. And uh, one of the things that sort of people say is when a, a battery is charging, it's kind of like lots of cars going to an empty car park. Eventually, each car has to work a little bit harder and try to suss out an empty available space for it. And it's kind of like that with batteries, really. So that means not just longer life, but potentially more aggressive charging profiles without killing the pack as early. So there's also a big supply chain story here as well that doesn't really get enough attention. It's definitely worth mentioning. Most of the world's battery grade graphite processing uh, happens in China. Even when graphite is mined elsewhere, it's often refined and uh, processed in China. That has become, that becomes, that's become a geo, that's become a geopolitical concern for Western automakers. 
uh, obviously in Europe, and that governments, especially after the last few years of supply disruption and export controls. Exxon, very, very clearly positioning this technology as a part of a broader push into advanced materials, not just energy. They've been acquiring assets and businesses, expertise from superior graphite, and uh, they've openly stated that they want to become a domestic supplier of high value synthetic graphite for EVs. So oil price and other industry outlets have reported that Exxon's commercial scale-up uh, timeline points more toward around 2028, 2029 for meaningful production volumes. So something that would start to con contribute you know, 10, 20, 30%, I would imagine, of the EV market uh, for the battery market, of course. Uh, this is something, so this isn't something that magically shows up in the next year's cars, you know, like next year, this is late decades, I mean, three, four years from now, infrastructure being built now and tested and put to all the tests. And that kind of aligns with, you know, what we're seeing elsewhere in the industry. General Motors, for example, has already signed a synthetic graphite supply deal with a Norwegian company called Vianode starting in 27, uh, 2027. That tells you automakers are willing to lock in non-Chinese anode supply years in advance, even if it costs a bit more money. That is important because synthetic graphite, typically more expensive than natural graphite, there is a difference, uh, but it is also more consistent. But it is also more consistent, purer, easier to engineer for specific performance characteristics in batteries. Consistency matters a lot. Tiny variations add up over millions of cells. And uh, there's also an interesting angle here for LFP batteries specifically. LFP chemistry already has excellent life cycle, definitely good enough for basically everybody. Many LFP packs are rated for 3000 cycles or more. If you intend, uh, ex extend that by basically another 10, 20, 30%, you're, you're suddenly talking about batteries that could realistically last a million kilometers in real world use. And that changes, uh, Actually, well, it changes the warranty at least, doesn't it? So, uh, yeah, it changes resale confidence in, in seven years' time, something like that, ten years' time. It changes how aggressively manufacturers can price uh, vehicles without worrying about long-term uh, battery liabilities. This is specifically, this is especially relevant for lower-cost EVs, uh, fleets and taxis and commercial vehicles, not just premium cars, expensive cars, but a battery that lasts longer isn't just about bragging rights at all. Uh, it's, it, you know, it reduces total cost of ownership, reduces warranty provisions on balance sheets and makes used EVs much less scary for second owners. I do reckon the electronics are the thing that's largely gonna fail before the battery chemistry most of the time. Uh, the data definitely points toward that, but these you know, the companies like Geely, you know, Zika and also BYD have excelled in their electronics department. BYD used to make electronics before it became a car manufacturer. And so that's, I think, one of the reasons why they're actually making such good electronics. And basically, so many people in Brazil have done two and a half, 300,000 kilometers, taxi drivers now, with BYDs, and they're, they're just the same. You get in it, you, 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 well, you don't turn the key, but you know, you get in it and you go, and it just works week and month after month and just kind of works so that's a good thing because i think when you know 2015 16 quite a few teslas model s's were having their their pyro fuse issue and the screen overheat and the pyro fuse on the battery was uh, buggering up but uh, you can get that fixed that was reasonably easy to fix but you had to kind of pull the battery down i believe it was and put it in the top but yeah that sort of those things are over with really and i think probably since 2019 even Tesla have nailed reliability. They're incredibly reliable, well-made, beautiful cars to drive. I've never owned one. I've considered buying one. But uh, yeah, they're all generally these big companies now. BYD, Geely, Zika, Tesla. They're making very finessed products. In a word, finessed. Or two words, finesse product, you know. It also is worth noting here where Exxon's feedstock comes from. So their synthetic graphite is produced from petroleum refining byproducts like petroleum coke. From Exxon's perspective, this is a way of leveraging existing fire refining infrastructure and chemical expertise rather than starting from scratch. It's not green in the way that, you know, people usually imagine, but it can still result in lower life cycle emissions compared to mining and shipping natural graphite long distances. So for example, uh, you, you get it from the middle of Australia and you, you truck it or put it on a train and send it somewhere onto a boat and then boat it somewhere. 
it's not an it's not ideal really so now does this now does this mean exxon has cracked some magic formula that instantly transforms ev batteries uh, i don't think so and this is where it gets you know it's important to be grounded basically so battery improvements tend to be incremental not really revolutionary uh, a five percent improvement here ten percent there better thermal stability slightly safer slightly faster charging you know slightly lower degradation better thermal uh, you can use them in the winter for example over time those increments kind of stack up and uh, th th these increments are coming quite quickly i think this is what we're seeing but it, it doesn't rewrite rewrite battery physics at all <clears throat> so the more interesting signal in my view here isn't the, the exact percentage it's the fact that oil majors are basically now seriously investing you know a lot of money many many millions and billions in battery materials not just fuels or carbon capture uh, that tell you where the long-term demand is heading exxon is not uh, doing this because it loves evs obviously they just want to make money and uh, it's doing this because transport electrification is happening and whoever controls critical materials controls a piece of the value chain graphite is one of those quietly critical materials that almost nobody outside of the the battery world talks about so for me this story is not about you know it's not exxon invents a miracle battery you know it's uh, graphite has become an important enough uh, thing that exxon wants wants in basically they want some they want to improve it a little bit and that on its own tells you a lot about where ev technology is heading over the next decade <clears throat> i'd be very interested to see independent test data when it is eventually uh, available when it emerges especially around fast charging degradation uh, high temperature cycling things like that that i think is where claims like this either hold up or they just they just crumble and fall apart basically but even at face value uh, this is a reminder that not all battery progress comes from flashy new chemistries or anything like that sometimes it's from more quite you know from quietly improving the most boring sounding component in the entire battery pack like graphite for example what do you think do you uh, you know do you care more about longer battery life or faster charging or cheaper batteries do you think western automakers can realistically realistically rebuild battery material supply chains outside of china or is this a pipe dream for them no pun intended is it a pipe dream what do you think <clears throat> hmm.